Hey, so today I'm trying something quite unusual. This is a seven year, and seven year is a wine made of 100% Chenin Blanc from the Loire Valley in France. But this particular wine is made by Nicolas Jolie. Nicolas Jolie is one of the proponents of biodynamic wines. Uh, he's been making biodynamic wines since the 1980s and has influenced the movement that has now gone international significantly. Uh, his wines are quite unusual. They're not really like other Sauvignon. Um, Sauvignon generally, I'd say, is it's not a it's a it's a style of Chenin in the Loire that's a little bit more austere than other Chenins, and um, probably is one of the most difficult styles of Chenin in the Loire to appreciate. But um, Nicolas Jolie's Chenins are made biodynamically and naturally. That is, he doesn't add any yeasts. He doesn't tend to sulfur heavily. He doesn't uh, fine or filter. Um, he tries to do things in a non-interventionist way and to the point where other people in Sauvignon criticise him because he's not making Sauvignon like Sauvignon should be made. He's making his own thing and he, ha he owns one of the most prestigious vineyards of Sauvignon, uh, Coulet de Sauron, and the wines he makes from that vineyard other winemakers, vignerons in the region consider not to be representative and this is a style of wine that people who are interested in biodynamics interested in different styles of wine absolutely should try you might not like it but it is distinctive and it has a cult following and it is something that exemplifies a particular uh, style of winemaking or philosophy of winemaking. I, in my personal opinion, Nicolas Jolie doesn't even care about wine. He all he cares about is biodynamics and making wine in a biodynamic way. And the first philosophy, in my opinion, is ridiculous. But he makes interesting wine. So this particular Sauvignon is his. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Le Vieux Clos. It's a particular cuvee of his, and this is a 2011. Um, he tends to make Sauvignon quite ripe. This is 14.5% alcohol, which is quite unusual for Sauvignon, which tend to be much lower in alcohol. Um, but I don't think you can feel it. Um, anyway, let's try it. I mean, the colour on there, it's... It's almost coppery. I mean, golden straw, you know, deep straw. I mean, it's pale, but it's it's got significant gold lights there. And on the nose, it's bizarre. I mean, these are bizarre wines. If you if if what you know of Chenin is is anything else, <laughs> uh, this nose is smells to me like toasted sesame, like peanuts, like satay. It has sea spray and fish kind of aspects that smells like there's a sappy kind of green character to it, like a, like a fresh cut stem of some kind of plant. But it also has other things on it that are characteristic of Shannon in the Loire, as you might expect otherwise, like beeswax, like honey and floral characteristics. Uh, it smells like herbaceous <clears throat> white flowers for me, particularly like cow parsley. It, but it also smells like canned salmon with the bones, like a calcium almost kind of smell. It smells like it has a dusty character, like like old an old kind of European, actually specifically. Uh, old room that where the dust has just settled on it and there's wooden floorboards um just just bizarre i mean the it's slightly oxidative style um 
it's not oxidized to the point where you're getting nuts and things like that. Uh, it's not too aldehydic, but but there are just intriguing aromatics going on here. <clears throat> and I was concerned about this particular bottle. The cork didn't look that great, but this is showing how I would expect a Nicolas Jolie wine to show. They're just different. Um, then on the palette, Hmm. It really doesn't show. It's relatively high alcohol. Um, it has a lot of lemon flavor going on. Quite high acid. It is a Shannon. There's a ripe Shannon though, and it still has really good acid. Honey. It's soft. <clears throat> uh, it actually tastes a lot like pollen, or like um, like a bee sack pollen like wild meadow flowers, like has a toasty element, that kind of toasted sesame is coming through again. Um, and it has those uh, slightly green kind of characters to it as well. It's fairly soft and smooth, but it's not heavy either. The beeswax, fresh in the finish, reasonably long, and the acid just keeps going. It's very refreshing. Just bizarre flavors uh, for what you might otherwise have experienced in Chenin Blanc, let alone La Chenin Blanc. This <clears throat> is a unique style of wine, and it is, it is a wine that anyone who's interested in the biodynamic movement or in exploring something different that's out there should try. Um, if you want to understand the biodynamic movement or natural winemaking or, you know, other alternative expressions of Chenin Blanc, or alternative expressions of white wine generally, this is the kind of wine that is worth seeking out. This particular bottle, um, this cost $50 Australian retail, although I think typically it costs a bit more than that. It's not his top wine, as I say, the Coulet de Saron uh, would be regarded as his top wine, and that sells for significantly more. But even the lesser bottlings are worth checking out for just that point of difference. Um, so, if you're interested in checking out something really quite bizarre, really different, and a piece of history, an iconic style of wine made by an iconic winemaker in a very different style, then try checking out a wine by Nicolas Jolie. Any one of his seven years will deliver. This particular one, the 2011 uh, Le Vieux Clos, is a pretty nice bottle.